it also comes out that the Chinese have a fear of what happened to the Soviet Union, the erstwhile Soviet Union. How did it fall? Because the systems have an eerie similarity. To discuss this entire thing, as I said, I have with me General Ravi Shankar. Sir, thank you so much. Oh, welcome. And anytime, it's a very interesting topic to discuss. Especially when the friendship is supposed to be, you know, in, in the Pakistani way, higher than the Himalayas and deeper than the oceans. Yep. <laughs> so, you know, the Chinese leadership during the collapse of the Soviet Union would have been watching this event very carefully and I'm sure would have been scared of what the impact could have been within their own country. What did they do at that time to prevent some this sort of a you know uh, outcome for their own system? Yeah, look, uh, before we talk of this, we should understand what happened in uh, Russia. And that background is important, right? Uh, and why are these fears coming? That's the next part. There are two aspects to this. Then we'll see why, how they did and all that. The first thing is that uh, at that time in Soviet Russia, it was a second superpower. Uh, the problem was that it was going through a through tremendous economic problems, right? It was overspending on military, a lot of corruption, dicta one party dictatorship, all that, you know. A typical communist regime, hollow. But it was not exactly in a state where it was to collapse. The collapse was not on the cards when Gorbachev took over. Now, Gorbachev started this business of uh, perestroika and glasnost. What is perestroika and glasnost? Change and openness. Glasnost is openness, perestroika is change. He felt that, you know, the system as it existed could not have continued for a longer time. So he wanted change. So he felt that to get the change back, he had to give powers to the people and people had to help them out. That was the fundamental of the whole story. And he was trying to take the system back to Leninist principles. Stalin and Brezhnev and all, they had a very hard form of communism. Uh, well, when he gave, did this business of glasnost and opened the system out, the people started rebelling. The people started questioning. And the Soviet didn't have an answer to it. Okay. Now, be that as it may, Gor uh, Chernobyl happened. When Chernobyl happened, the world, forget the world, even Kiev didn't know it had happened till about third even after about two days. There were celebrations in Kiev and parades in Kiev when Gor uh, Chernobyl was still very active. So the general view was that, look, uh, Russia hid this from the world. But if you, in one of the interviews, uh, Gorbachev has said, we didn't know what was happening. So we didn't lie. But when we came to know, we did what we had to do. So they can't. But then, be that as it may, this dichotomy started making people question even more. They lost faith in the system. When they lost faith in the people who lost faith in the system, the system collapsed. That rigid system collapsed. Okay. And it is said that in Russia, it was not the uh, you know great uh, what shall I say protests and all that which happened. It was the normal people. And their protests and their way of, you know, they conveyed it to government in such a form that it collapsed non-violently and it finished off. So, right. Now, this was 91-92. This is a time when Deng Xiaoping was going through his four modernizations or rather he kicked off his four modernizations. They were 20 years into reform. 72 was when Nixon went to China. And this is 91, almost two decades of you know, Deng had consolidated his hold over China and he was, he saw that a command economy like uh, what China had at that time and like what uh, Russia had cannot compete with a capitalist economy. Mm -hmm. And a command economy will always flutter. And then if you keep the people down, 
the people will rebel so he, he saw the pitfalls of the uh, you know soviet system so what did he do he said give freedoms to the people but retain a, and make it a command uh, capitalist economy let people make money let jobs come let everything let prosperity happen but have a command system a one party authoritarian rule at the top so he so from being a absolute out and out communist state he changed china into a authoritarian capitalist state capitalism at the bottom let people make money when money comes prosperity will come when prosperity comes china will grow and as china grows the party retains control so he said i there will be no competition to the party but the capitalist system will flow that's how he avoided this whole story but then it has caught up so then yeah next question yeah let's uh, go ahead that's what sir now you know they've taken the steps they've brought their economy up and they are they are the second largest economy in the world they've got a solid military we've discussed about the military they've got their flaws but whatever said and done they've got a solid military uh, a very strong economy going having a little bit of a speed bump right now fair enough and how high is the speed bump totally different discussion but why is there still a predominant you know obsession of a comparison with the soviet union sir see uh, the fundamental problem comes from the fact that it is a one party state there is no opposition okay i mean let's take india usa and all if one party comes to power the economy doesn't function things like they thrown out another chap comes in i mean a, a, a democracy is changed governments like diapers it's wet throw it out that's fundamental and that's the healthy healthiness of a democracy it can take setbacks this can't mm. there's a social contract between the state and the government uh, state and the people the social contract is you give up your freedom we will give you your security economy and well being and all that when that gets threatened all these problems come up and china is going through a, a slow down one of their economists recently said i mean and now i'm going to read and quote huh? he says given the serious economic slowdown we are currently facing the day china surpasses the us is moving away and not coming closer so they have economic problems which are serious now in this serious economic problems the people will get affected if the people will get affected their party will get affected so that is why all this thing which is going on and they started saying look we might collapse like this. because the economy is gone down till the economy was going up it was fine mm. now if you ask me why has the economy gone down there are many reasons wealth inequality we have discussed this right now when the wealth inequality was the people at the lower end were getting uh, you know affected so xi jinping brought that common prosperity so he cut out the top uh, earning in icon icons of unicorns of china and started giving money to the bottom so that means the dynamism and all that has slowed down the tech sector uh, collapsed or i won't say collapsed it's been emasculated so their economy has slowed down then the property bubble because the entire property is on debt that property bubble meant the property is gone i mean between property and tech uh, constitutes anything between 40 to 50% of the chinese gdp and the economy these two have been hit so their economy is really slowing down if their economy is slowing down people are getting hit if people are getting hit they are threatening the government in china people and politics matter i mean let me put it this way in china for every man every family everyone owning a house is a matter of importance it is that is where they put their maximum money in and that has gone the valuation of the those housings are all gone so there is no security so all a person's life earning is gone and that uh, in a, put in a flat which he might not even get at times or if he gets it's of got no value so that is why all this things are coming up slowing economy people are dissatisfied then of course covid and its effects are also there 
So now comparisons with Chernobyl have started. I read somewhere, sir, where somebody had written in uh, South China Morning Post, I think, where they said that uh, they don't want to be number one anymore. You know, they're satisfied with a fast-growing economy and a top economy in the world. They don't want to be number one anymore. So that's kind no, of that is no, that is a different story. Yeah, uh, that uh, they don't want to. They don't want to be number one because they know they can't be number they one. They can't. Correct. Okay. So now they are saying, no, no, we don't want to be number one. And take uh, care. The fact is that the chances of their becoming number one are getting weaker by the day. They might. That's a different story. But the general consensus, since it has started coming from them itself, there has to be a certain amount of truth in it. You compared Wuhan to Chernobyl, sir. And as a matter of fact, the impact of Chernobyl and the impact of Wuhan, I would say the impact Wuhan. of Wuhan was much larger. It affected the entire world. And it's created some sort of a antitrust sort of a you know situation for China. How would you, would you put it as the beginning of the end of China? Would you put that spot in history as the time when China started going down? See, uh, let me moment? put it this way. That will be the end. China won't end, nor will it collapse. Let me be upfront about it. Why? Soviet Union collapsed because it was a conglomeration of 15 different uh, Soviet republics of Correct. different ethnicities and huge places. China doesn't have that. China, 90% of China is uh, Han. At best, Tibet and Xinjiang uh, might break away. But the history suggests whenever the central authority in China has been weak, uh, both these countries have put up flags of autonomy and independence. When they've been strong, they've been part of that system. So this is a curve which goes on. To them. Okay. But the... Uh, the difference is something somewhere else. I mean, when you start comparing Chernobyl and the virus, what did Chernobyl do to Soviet Union? It accelerated the decay. The question which we really have to answer is, is Wuhan accelerating the decay of China? Mm 